today we're talking about puckers. I'm going to show you my very first quilt and I am sharing with you my magic tool to eliminate puckers. Hi there! Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to the Shiridu channel. My name is Irene and today we are talking about puckers. Have you ever had a pucker in your quilt? So maybe in the front that you got while piecing, so you're piecing two pieces together and fabric is bulking up a little bit and your foot comes and then it puckers, well it folds over and you sew it and there you have a pucker. Fabric is stretchy material so that can just happen when you're making something. But the puckers that I want to talk about today are the puckers that you can get uh, at the back of your quilt or even at your top uh, when you're making a quilt sandwich and then quilting it through. Especially when you're doing straight stitching and maybe doing a grid, so where the straight lines are crossing. Um, I got a lot of puckers when I started quilting that way. And I thought that it was just part of the game and that and when you crossed two lines while quilting, that that just resulted in a pucker every now and then. But when I started to see more and more quilts of more experienced quilters, I didn't see so many puckers, or maybe I didn't see any at all, as what I saw in my own work. That already can mean two things. That can mean that either they don't make puckers, or either you don't notice some mistakes in other people's work as much as you do in your own. But <laughs> That's not what this video is about. I'm going to show you my very first quilt that I made. I think this was my very first. Probably I've made a quilt block before this. Um, but this is the first one that really was sandwiched and turned into a quilt. It took a long, long time before um, we got the binding on. And I think even my mom put the binding on this because it was laying for so long uh, unfinished. But making the top and doing the quilting I did myself. So let me show you. Here is my very first super duper wonky quilt. It's with not even quilting cotton. It is with um, a thinner kind of cotton uh, fabric from a fabric market over here. But not especially for quilting. So this stretches even more than normal quilting fabric. So what I did was sew blocks of three strips together and then join those and then do some straight line stitching at the back. And when I would show it like this, you probably can't notice any puckers, but when you're working on something and you get a pucker, you really notice it. And um, there is a way to prevent it. So for example, here at the front, there's a little pucker uh, where those lines intersect. That is mostly where I got my puckers to be. And uh, most of the puckers I had were at the back of my work. So now I even, I even have to search a little bit, but here there's a whole, there's a whole piece that's folded double <laughs> and I've just sewn it down. Also here a nice, a deep wrinkle in there that I've sewn in. And actually I'm quite happy that I left this all in because you don't notice when you use it, you don't really notice it and it would have been such a trouble to take it out, sew it again and then have puckers all over again. Here we have another one. So fabric folded double and I've just stitched over it and there you have a pucker. So why does this happen? I, I was wondering why does this happen and um, it changed a little bit when I started using a different type of foot. So this little quilt was made with no kind of top transport, uh, just the feed dogs at the bottom of your work and a very normal flat sewing machine foot in there. So only the top, uh, well only the bottom, so the feed dogs were moving the fabric and the top was, uh, the top, so the sewing machine foot was standing still. And that is what I was using for this. Um, 
adding on to that that I wasn't a pro at basting my quilt uh, which is a very important step for quilting when you want to prevent puckers so maybe I can make a list um, steps to do to prevent puckers while quilting straight line quilting and especially straight lines across so first thing um, make sure that you have a good sandwich so when you're sandwiching the backing fabric the batting and your top make sure that you iron them very well and that they are not wobbly so when you have a quilt top that is uh, kind of wobbly because maybe in the middle you have a part that you haven't squared off very well and you just continued adding pieces to it then it can get wobbly and it's okay but then you probably will have some puckers when you do some grid quilting on it um, so um, making sure that the backing and the top are ironed and then also that your um, quilt sandwich is really well good <laughs> either use uh, spray basting or use um, stitches to baste it or pins the method doesn't really matter but just make sure that uh, it's all it will all stay in place while quilting so with this one I have no idea how I um, basted it it could very well be that I've just put in some pins at random places and then started quilting it I didn't really know that you needed to make a good sandwich back then so um, that is one step to prevent puckers when all the layers stay at um, the same position then your fabric won't move and when your fabric doesn't move then uh, it won't bulk up so um, when your fabric moves so this is your flat quilt top and then it starts moving then you will get puckers but when the the sandwich stays in place then you can just sew it without uh, getting any puckers so making a good quilt sandwich pretty important next step can be to go slow and to make sure that the pressure of your foot so let's say you have the situation where I started that you just have your uh, feed dogs that transport the fabric and you have a normal sewing machine foot on top of it um, when the pressure is super high so when you're sewing together two pieces of fabric that is much thinner than when you're doing a quilt so um, a quilt is thicker so then the pressure of the foot could be less so if that is adjustable at your sewing machine that is something that you might want to try out so uh, lower the pressure of your foot a little bit because this is a pretty good example when, when you're going over it uh, with a little pressure then it will probably stay in place but if you're pushing harder with your foot then you can move the fabric it's quite a good example actually to show you what I mean um, yeah so uh, pressure of your uh, sewing machine foot that could be something going slow could also some be something to keep in mind because when you're going slow especially for the top of your quilt of course you can't see the bottom of the quilt when you are quilting it through but especially the top you can notice fabric um, starting to bulk up while you're sewing and then you can stop and maybe lift your foot and then uh, flatten out the quilt a little bit so that you spread out that extra fabric that was bulking up so that you spread it out a little bit when you see it happening uh, you lift your foot and spread it out a little bit so that it is a more fabric at one place but just so much that it's just not puckering um, and when you're going super super fast so I know that I was really um, <laughs> kind of hurrying with this um, was my first quilt but once I did my first straight line then I was going like a machine um, so when you're going slow you have more control of what's happening so you have more control to fix something that's coming up there's already a little list of things you can do so the next improvement for me was uh, a different sewing machine so um, I got a sewing machine with a top transport and at my Bernina that's called a jewel feed uh, let me show you what that looks like so here we have um, my Bernina set up with a standard sewing foot so this is sewing foot 1D and this 
is the dual feet. So um, when you put this in place, um, this is a little gripper and that will grip the fabric from the top. So here you already have a tiny gripper on top and your feed dogs below. So this will already have the effect of having one at the bottom and one at the top that will both grip and pull your fabric through. So using a machine with a top transport or a dual feed like the Vernina, that is great to have more uh, control of moving your fabric. So it all is about moving the fabric evenly so that the bottom layer is not going faster than the upper layer. And with that top transport, that will help you um, pull your fabric through the machine evenly. But there is a magic tool that I really, really love and uh, it helps to make my quilting even better. And when I use this in my videos, I often get questions about uh, my machine. Um, people who also have Vernina asking, hey, your machine has a dual feed, why do you use... Before we continue, this video is sponsored by, well, not really. No, I don't have a sponsor for this video, but I am sponsoring my own video in a kind of way. I just wanted to tell you that next week, so on the 14th of September, the doors for my e-course, Foundation Paper Piecing e-course, will open. So if you want to dive in foundation paper piecing, want to do a four week online course with me and a whole bunch of other quilters in an online community where we go through four modules of uh, foundation paper piecing information, then hop on to my newsletter because I will be sharing my early bird discount there this Monday. So check out the link in the description below if you want to hop on, on my newsletter to be the first to know about the early, early bird discount for the Shoe Redo Foundation Paper Piecing e-course. A walking foot, because this is my magic tool. It is a walking foot and I'm sure that you also have it for other brands than Merninas. So just ask your dealer if it's accessible for your machine. And um, what this is, is just a super wide, big gripper. So you see those black parts over here, a little bit kind of rubbery parts that will grip your uh, fabric from the top and pull it through. So those black parts can actually move like this. And uh, this thingy goes, well, I can show you how to install it. Um, and this is really magic. I'm not sure what angle is best to show you, but let me first remove this foot over here. And then you have the um, walking foot. And for this, this uh, gripper goes around the screw of your needle. I'm going to show you as well from a different corner. So you make sure that in that goes around the screw of your needle and then you just lift it up and secure this in place. And there it is. That's all there is to it to install the walking foot. Let me show you again from this angle. So here we have the little gripper and that goes over this screw. So the screw that keeps your needle in place and then we'll just lift it up and fasten it with the thing over here. Um, yeah, and then it's in place. So that is how you place your walking foot on the Bernina and when you start to sew with it, you can see that the foot is going to really walk the fabric and the walking part of the foot and the walking part of the foot is moving simultaneously with the feed dogs so when this walking part goes up the feed dogs will be down and then when the walking part goes down the feed dogs will be up so they will pull through the fabrics evenly so your top layer and your bottom layer 
go through the machine evenly. So for me, that walking foot really feels like magic. It's a magic tool because it keeps everything so well in place. So yes, uh, the Bernina does have a dual feet, um, but adding on a walking foot to it, it's a whole new level of control. So I really, really like that when I'm doing grid quilting. But of course, this wasn't my only quilt that I made until I moved up to a different machine. Um, I already started making other quilts. So here are two other quilts that I've made. Maybe also nice to share you. Here we have one, kind of similar design. Here I moved already to quilting cotton. So <laughs> this is a beautiful fabric from Ankel. And this is what it looks. Also a nice doable quilt size. So this was, I guess, the second or one of the first quilts that I made. And uh, no, I guess the third. And this one with little houses, also one I made a long time ago. And these quilts, um, I think they don't have any puckers. And I made them on the same machine as I made the blue quilt. So what I did was I just changed up my quilting design. For this one, I went for straight lines with little, little wiggly parts in between. So here you see straight line quilting and then little wiggly lines to break it up a little bit. Um, it looks fun on the quilt as well, on the front as well, I think. Let me see if I can show you the wiggly parts. So there's a wiggly part, there's a wiggly part, or a zigzag. Um, so these straight lines, uh, they don't cross each other, so there's less chance of puckers. Of course you can have puckers um, because the sewing on top was wonky, but with some good ironing and um, a good basting spray, that will prevent a lot. Um, yeah, so also straight line, but no puckers because the lines were just not intersecting. And then this little quilt, also um, no puckers, I guess. Let me see, really no puckers, not much puckers. So much stitches and some <laughs> very big stitches, very small stitches. But what I did here was um, free motion quilting. So it it's not pretty, but it it doesn't really need to be. I, I mean pretty. Well, I guess it's pretty, but it's not perfect. So it's not perfect loops, not perfect stitches, like you can see here. It's not super perfect, but when you look at it from a distance, you won't see that. And this also doesn't have puckers. So um, you can change your design to eliminate puckers or you can uh, change the way you make a sandwich or you can change maybe your quilting foot on your machine see if there's a walking foot available for your sewing machine um, yeah and change up the design that you're making on your quilt so this little loop-ty-loop -loop design um, didn't make puckers so yeah, that's it. That's um, my story about my magic tool for eliminating puckers and two other easy to do solutions to just don't have those straight lines crossing on your quilt. I hope this video helped you a little bit in some way. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again next week on the Shiridu channel. Bye bye.